Hi there. This is David Moyer, The Battle for a Healthy Voice. I've been thinking about what I wanted to say in this video for many years. And in the past two or three weeks, I've written down some notes. So I'll be reading most of this today. But it's very important that if you're serious about having a healthy singing voice and a healthy speaking voice, you listen to this. It's going to be a four-part webinar. And the title of this is The Morphing of the Spoken and the Singing Word. So it's the morphing of the spoken word and the singing word. Here we go. Most of this will be read by me, and I'll be interjecting some things that aren't in my notes. In the late 70s, the computer became a household item. Then gradually, through the 80s, it became an educational tool. In 1993, the general public connected to the internet. And now, within the past five years, penmanship, that is what we used to call in my time as a boy, writing as a subject, has been virtually eliminated from the educational system. Now, students today in the same room text mainly to each other, they mainly text to each other, rather than audibly communicating with each other. The morphing of verbal communication has been going on for almost 200 years. I've done some serious studying into this, and I teach the system, but some of you have seen my videos. It's called pure bel canto, because the original bel canto is completely distorted. Now, when you see an opera singer sing, or a Broadway singer, or most singers speak and sing, instead of what you see going on right now, then you can understand every sound of every syllable of every word that I'm speaking. They talk and sing like this. That will never work, and it will never give you clarity of sound in terms of being understood while you're speaking or you're singing, and it will never give you healthy singing. When did the transition of the morphing of the language begin? According to historical records, around 1834 to 1836, the vocal system for speaking and singing bel canto, that is, healthy and freely produced sound, singing is when you use, excuse me, healthy and freely produced sound, began to morph into expanded sound, that is, power speaking and singing. Power speaking and singing is when you use more tension in your throat than natural tension. Natural vocal tension has no visual signs of stress, such as distended veins in your neck, sticking out kind of like little or big sausages as you speak or sing, a jutted, tense jaw, and redness in the face and in the neck cheeks, quite a bit, redness. This system of expanded sound, power singing, is now the dominant method of vocal production in speaking and singing. Coupled with today's rapid talking, we get a loud blur of mostly indistinguishable words. At the drive-thru at a fast food place or a coffee shop, we hear most of the time, good afternoon, may I help you? which is supposed to be, good afternoon, may I help you? When the order is repeated, most people that work in the business of drive throughs rapidly fire off the words, something like this. So you want a cheeseburger? I mean a fry, I mean a Coke with light ice. Once the transmission is complete, they say, have a good day. Translated in non-morphed English, that last part means have a good day. The other part, so you want a cheeseburger? That's so you want a cheeseburger. Medium fry? A medium fry. And a medium Coke with light ice? And a medium Coke with light ice. Thus, the morphing of the spoken word. And it's not their fault. This has been going on, like I said earlier, for almost 200 years. Here's what we mainly attribute it to. The increase in the size of the performance hall. Excuse me for my throat, I've got allergies, had them for a couple of weeks. Fred Waring, 
the director and owner of the most famous choir in the history of recorded music. Look it up on YouTube. Look it up on Wikipedia. He was aware of this and he developed in the 20s a system to do something about it. So please YouTube Fred Waring's Pennsylvanians, listen to any one of their songs, and you will be able to understand their words. Mr. Waring taught his singers a system he invented entitled Tone Syllables. And when you attended any one of his concerts, you always understood every single sound of every single syllable of every single word, whether we were singing or speaking. Why do I say we? Because yes, I was a member of Fred Waring's Pennsylvanians, and it was not easy to get hired. To be in his musical group, you had to audition in a vocal group of around 30 people against about 600,000 different people. So around 20,000 per person, give or take three, 400,000, whatever. Very, very difficult. And you had to go on stage after their show, and then they would come out stand around, watch you sing. Well, I did get hired, as I said, and I was with him 1974 and 75. After I left his choir, I later developed my own choir and my own set of tone syllables, my own system that I call projectional pronunciation. So far, I've published two videos in which I began, excuse me, in which I have begun the training of that system. Can this morphin of our language be corrected? Absolutely. The first step is slowing your speech. Translated, that is non-morphed. Slow down your speech. Not a silly way. Uh, but simply put, think about what you're about to say before you say it and to whom you're going to say it to before you communicate with them. Next, add auditory emotions to your verbal communications before you speak. One such tool is to use inflection, raising and lowering the pitch. That was extreme, but that's what we used to do as one of the ways to express emotion would say, hey, you know what? I'll tell you what. That doesn't work so much anymore. In fact, most people just make their voice louder on one pitch or quieter like that. It's not the way for vocal health. No, sir. Or the best of vocal sound and the best of a range and control. Now we just speak louder rather than raise or lower our pitch. In closing, I thank you for taking your very important time to consider my concern. And please forgive me for my stumblings as I spoke this through. I have practiced it, but it is hard to do it. So please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell and watch. There's going to be three more videos about this webinar, about this very subject. I mean, with this webinar about this very subject. The next video on this very thing will be titled, I can't understand what they are speaking or singing, part two. And remember, every sound of every syllable of every word matters, and you can learn to do that. You know, when I was with the New Christie Minstrels, I had a lot of fun. And I got to do the speech from the Music Man when we opened for Bob Hope at the Palladium where they used to do the Academy Awards. I'm gonna give you a little bit of that and you'll hear how fast I go, but I'll be using tone syllables modified in my system called projectional pronunciation. Are you ready? Friend. Either you are closing your eyes to a situation which you do not wish to acknowledge, or you are unaware of the caliber of disaster indicated by the presence of a pool table in your community.
Well, you got trouble, my friend. I say trouble right here in River City. Well, sure, I'm a billiard ball player. Certainly mighty proud to say it. I'm always mighty proud to say it. I consider that the hours I spend with a cue in my hand are golden. Help me cultivate horse sense and a cool head and a keen eye. Did you ever try to try and, did you ever try and shove an ironclad leave to yourself from a three-rail billiard shot? But just as I say it takes judgment, brains, and maturity to score in a bulk line game, and I say that any boob can take and shove a ball in a pocket. And I call that sloth the first big steps on the road to the depths of degradation, say first, medicinal wine from a teaspoon, then beer from a bottle, and so on. Now, <clears throat> I did that when I was about 33. I'm now almost 74, and believe it or not, why do I teach the battle for a healthy voice? Why do I use that title? Why am I so serious about it? Because I knew how to sing right, I knew how to speak right, and I chose to do it wrong. And much like Adele has had 21 surgeries, I believe it is, Lionel Richie's had about 17, Barbara Streisand had surgery, Michael Bublé's had surgery, from singing incorrectly, too much tension. I can demonstrate that, I'd rather not, because what you're hearing in my voice isn't just allergies, I've had three corrective surgeries. So with that in mind, keep in mind, work at pronouncing small mouth, trumpet shape, every single sound of every single syllable of every single word. And remember, I used to be the leader of the new Christie Minstrels, 1980 through 1983, and our big song, this land was made for you and me. See you next time. Bye-bye, and God bless you.